This is a, an injection molded product and I designed the case for this. We recently discovered a design flaw in the battery door, so what do we do? As I mentioned in the introduction, we had an issue with the battery door. If I hold this up, we have the, the two tabs. And one of the things that we were discovering with the tabs is that they were breaking off in the field. So the first question is, why are they breaking off in the field? And then the next thing is, what do we do about it? We want to make them stronger. And uh, fortunately, that's something that's fairly easy to do in a way that's known as steel safe. In other words, we can remove metal from the mold. And removing metal from the mold will make a section of the, the plastic either wider or thicker or longer, which is exactly what we want to do in this case. So let me go to the computer and show you what I figured out was the source of the problem and then explain how I'm going to get around it. Let's take a look at just the battery door. So I'll click on this to make it easier to find here because it underlines it. And then I'll isolate it. And now we can see the tabs. What I want to do is get an idea of why these are weak. And the easiest way I've found to do that is to use a cross section or a section analysis. So I'll do a section analysis along that plane there. And then I want to drag this until I see a cross section of the tab. And then what I'm going to do is get close so you can see this better. What is quite clear in looking at this is that the distance from this corner here to there is not that long. When you have a sharp corner like this with a piece of plastic you're right there, that tends to be a stress point. And this is therefore where cracks tend to form. So because the distance from there to there is not that much, compared to the thickness here, I can see how this would be a stress point that would cause a fracture and therefore make these weaker than it should be. So there are a few things I can do to fix this. One is I can move this to the right so that there's a lot more plastic over here, which I will do. The other thing I can do, let me turn off the section analysis, is I can make these thicker. And making them thicker will also make them stronger because now the distance from there to there will be longer as well. There's one more change I can make, so let me show the back as well so that you can see it, which is I can make the tabs wider because the pockets that I have in here are wide enough so that there's plenty of room to make this wider. So the approach that I took to doing this is to create a copy of the battery door. I didn't want to change the, the original version. So what I did is I right clicked and then said, save copy as, and gave it a new name. Now I've, I've already done that. So if I go over to here, I have this new version that has thicker tabs. And if you look at this version here, let me get rid of that. You can see that it is thicker. Now it's thicker here than over there because I decided to make the bottom flat instead of curved like it was before. I moved this over to the right and I also made them wider. Now let me show you one of the reasons that I did it that way. If I go back here, I have that version of the battery door in here as well. And actually one of the things I can do is I can show the original version of the battery door with the new one translucent so you can clearly see the difference. You can see how this is wider in this direction, it's wider in this direction, and it's also thicker. Now the reason I have it as a flat bottom, it will become clear when I turn this on. And let me uh, make that active. Okay, it won't let me do that, but I'll go here. And let's see, remove the back. Okay, so now what you can see is that I have to be careful about clearance between the tabs and the top of the battery door. I wasn't sure if this clearance was going to be enough, so I sent this model to TCS for them to 3D print on their resin printer and test it out. Let me actually hide this other version. And they reported that it's everything is fine. 
So because everything is fine with this version, I can now send this off to the injection molder to have them make the changes to the mold. When communicating with the injection molding company, it's really important to have good documentation as to exactly what you want them to do so that there's no confusion. And you want it to be written rather than verbal because it's easy if you do it verbally for people not to hear things the way you intend or not understand things correctly or forget what you said, etc. So having things done verbally means that your chances of not getting what you want are pretty high. So it's really important to make sure that you have something written down. So I tend to use PowerPoint uh, to create a document that describes the differences, as well as a, a written document. So I created these drawings here, and then I'll show you how I put that into a written document. So this shows where we have the old tab, which is the current tab, and then the revised tab in these two different views. And then this also is something that I, I'm using to say, these are the only places where we're making changes. This is the document that I put together, and you can see that it has the images that I showed previously that I created in PowerPoint, as well as some text to document the changes. I like to use bullet points quite a bit to say these are the exact changes. By using bullet points instead of a paragraph, it's much easier for someone to say, okay, these are the different changes. Another option, of course, would be to make this a numbered list, and that's quite useful in cases, because then if there's correspondence, you can refer to the different numbers that are in the list. So now that I think of it, these should actually be a numbered list so that we can have that conversation. So this is the type of document that is extremely useful to send to the injection molder before they make any changes. So if they have any questions, you can address those before they make the changes and then not discover things when it's too late. So the nice thing about uh, what I showed you is it tells you that you don't have to get the design absolutely perfect when you first create the mold. In fact, much of the time, people don't create a part that's absolutely perfect and you have to do some fine-tuning and adjustment. The important thing is that you make sure that when you do that type of uh, adjustment and therefore when you design your part, you make it so that you have to add plastic, in other words make it steel safe, so that it's fairly easy to make changes to the mold. So I just passed 30,000 subscribers, which just totally amazes me. I want to say thank you to everyone who watches and has subscribed. Happy New Year to everyone, and please give me a thumbs up, comment below, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.